everyone, my name is Alex, and in this video I'm going to be showing you five real-life sniper tactics that I was taught when I attended sniper school. For a bit of background information then, I've been in the army for seven years now, uh, three of which I spent as a sniper, including one tour of Afghanistan as a number one or a shooter. Recently then, I've been playing DayZ, the standalone game. After switching from Armour 3 mod, I've been enjoying it, I've not played a lot of it, but I thought I'd share some of the things that I know of that maybe you guys don't. And the first tip we're going to be jumping into today is intervisibility. Intervisibility is defined as the ability to see in a direct line of sight from one position on the Earth's surface to another, considering the intervening terrain. This is a complicated way of saying, can I see what I'm looking at, or is something in the way? The best way to describe this then, is to think if you were trying to navigate your way past something, covertly, or approach something without being seen. The best way to stay hidden is to make it impossible to be seen in the first place, i.e. by positioning yourself so that there is a large geographical feature in between you and the target. For instance, if someone was at the top of this hill, they would have absolutely no way of seeing you down here in this dead ground, and therefore the terrain will hide you better than any ghillie suit ever would. The next tip then, skylining. Skylining, then, plays hand in hand with intervisibility. Skylining refers to the outline of a figure as they move across the top of a high feature with the sky behind them as a backdrop. When this happens, you literally stick out like a sore thumb and are very easy to identify. For instance, while moving up this high feature, everyone on the opposing hill has clear view of you skylining yourself. Therefore, we employ a tactic called contouring. This means that rather than standing on the top of a hill and moving upwards, you drop to the side of the hill so as not to have the sky behind you as a backdrop. This then hides you from other high features or anyone looking up at you. Tip number three then, movement. When conducting yourself in the battle space, it's important to remember you could always be being watched. And if you're always being watched, you could always be being aimed at. Therefore, we employ a method called the one below movement. This is a very simple concept, although rather time consuming. What it effectively means is you should always use the method of movement below what you think is acceptable. For instance, if you think you can walk around without being seen, then you should be crawling or on your knees. If you think you can get away with crawling or on your knees, then you need to be on your stomach. And if you think you can get away with crawling around on your stomach, then don't even think about going there because someone is gonna take your head off. Tip number four then, the intelligent preparation of battle. This means when approaching a target or navigating the area, you need to think like the enemy. Use your map and work backwards from the route you intend to take and think like the enemy. Where would I put defenses? Where would I look? If I was the opposing force, where would I go? It's a hell of a lot easier to avoid the enemy when you're thinking like him. For example, approaching this city, I wouldn't use the road as there'd be defenses. Instead, I'd try and find a route using natural low ground to cover my approach. Plan properly and avoid fuck-ups. Every battle is won before it is fought. Last tip of the video then, loophole shooting. Loophole shooting is a technique used to hide the firer from the target. Sniper rifles are very high-tech bits of equipment and are often very large. However, the bullet they fire is often rather small, all things considered. Standing at the edge of the woods or behind a lone single tree and firing just isn't good enough. You will be seen, you will be caught, or you will be shot. Therefore, you should always move backwards and try and find small, minute angles for you to shoot in. Using these apertures, you will minimize the risk of somebody being able to see through. Therefore, minimizing the risk of your target seeing you before you either kill them or avoid them. For example, we have the exact same line of sight on this barn with greatly increased cover from view and fire provided by the aperture we found in the trees. This trick is obviously no good if you're in the middle of a gunfight. However, if the fight is on your terms and you're the one to initiate it, taking the time to find an aperture like this will pay dividends because the target will have no idea where to look and will have virtually no chance of seeing through the aperture and discovering your position. And if they can't see you, they can't shoot back at you. And the best types of gunfights are the ones where no one can shoot back at you. Right, there we go then. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope I've taught you something perhaps you didn't know before. And if you did, maybe you're just a sniping god. 
please feel free to like the video and subscribe if you want to stick around. I'll probably bring out another one of these videos as soon as I can. I also try and stream twice a week over on Twitch, and my username over there is KingAlex338 if you want to head over there and maybe watch some of this footage get recorded live. And uh, maybe I'll try and make the next video a little less serious. It wasn't my intention to make it this serious, however, uh, going back through and watching it, it's, uh, it's pretty intense. And that's normally not like me. If you look through some of my other videos, uh, you'll know I'm a fucking retard, and I don't really take much seriously. But if you liked it, then maybe I'll make another one like this, and uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace out.